Welcome everyone to episode one of my Festy Hub podcast. I am your host, Manny, aka Frisky Hug. Uh, today, I am very excited, um, very happy to actually start like this podcast journey and very hyped for this first episode. Um, what we will be talking about today will be Global Dance Festival. I went to that a little bit ago and it's still a little fresh in my mind. So I thought maybe it'd be a good idea to kind of uh, talk about that festival. That festival is here in Denver and it was a, it was about a five stage festival. Um, but I want to start my podcast um, every time with four shout outs. So we will be doing one shout out to a content creator, one shout out to a DJ, one shout out to a business or brand, and then the fourth shout out will be to a um, friend or follower who has been very supportive throughout my journey. Um, for those of you that are just tuning in and didn't get to see the intro episode, um, I go by Frisky Hug on social media. I'm an EDM content creator. I do a lot of vlogs. I, I do a lot of sponsoring on Instagram. I do a lot of unboxing videos. I'm kind of an all around um, EDM style uh, content creator. Um, so let's start with the shout outs. So shout out number one um, is the content creator one. And that's going to go to Sarah. Um, she goes by Infinity X Externity. Um, sorry, she goes by Infinity X Eternity um, on Instagram. I will also be putting everybody's information for those of you watching on YouTube. It, it will all be in the description in case you want to give any one of these guys a look. Um, so I'm giving the first shout out to Sarah um, because she has really been stepping up her game as a content creator. She has been working with brands lately and it's really been showing how like her following has increased, her page has increased in quality. Um, her pictures are more vibrant. She's definitely um, talking more about the community and it always makes me happy to see more content creators in the festival space. So I wanted to give her a quick shout out. She's just an amazing person. And I think she's going to be, you know, continuing this content creator journey. And I wanted to make sure that um, I give her the proper shout out to that. Second shout out is going to be to Corbin. He's a 14 year old DJ. He has been just killing it lately. Um, Corbin goes by X Cobra. Um, that's his DJ name. His Instagram is Cobra under, sorry, it's Corbin underscore X Cobra. Um, so yeah, I've known him for a couple of years now. I've gotten to know his family. Um, we're all uh, pretty, pretty close uh, since we all live here in, in Colorado. So I've, I've been around his, him and his family for a while. Um, he just recently played at Global Dance Festival. He's only 14, playing at a huge festival. It's a huge leap. Um, but I wanted to give him a shout out because him and his family have been nothing but great to me. They've been super supportive. They've always made it, um, you know, they've always made like my company with them, like wonderful. So I just wanted to give him a quick shout out. Um, and I wanted to highlight that he is also playing at Foam Wonderland for those of you that are local to the Colorado scene. Um, that will be, if you're watching this on Friday, it should be tomorrow on Saturday. Um, he's playing at the second stage. So kudos to you, Corbin. You're going to be amazing. You're, you're doing great already. I cannot wait to see what the rest of your life has in store for you. Shout out number three is for a business or brand. So this one's going to go to Fassy Ticket. Um, Fassy Ticket is a ticketing company. Um, and they just uh, became like the ticketing company for Excisions new event it's that new festival in cancun called paradise blue um so congratulations festi ticket um i know that's that's such an amazing thing to accomplish and i wanted to give them a shout out um shout out number four is going to go to my best friend hayden um hayden and i met a few years back uh, we met actually off of instagram um we talked over some clothes and we became good friends at the beginning and we just our relationship just took off and you know years later we're still best friends we're still going to festivals together nothing has changed and uh he has been honestly 
so supportive of me. He's always been around. He's always been there for me. So I wanted to give him that shout out. So those are your four shout outs. Um, for those of you watching on YouTube, everything will be down in the description. So Global Dance Festival, let's start with, with that one. Um, so we didn't have Global Dance Festival in 2020, but we did have Global Dance Festival in 2019 and 2021. So 2021 Global Dance Festival was in Denver. It is over at the Mile High Stadium, so where the Broncos play. It's not located inside, but rather in the parking lot. Um, so we're going to fast track to the day of the festival. So I'm getting off of work and I actually, since I also live in Colorado, I went straight from working my job and went straight home. I was already packed, ready to go. Everything was in my car, but I wanted to put on some fresh clothes and head over to Denver. Um, I had to also pick up a friend from the airport, which made things a little complicated because um, the airport's kind of on the far east side of Denver and the event's like center and so was our hotel. It was dead center. So I didn't really mind it because it's supposed to be just like a 15 minute drive, but traffic that day, as I remember, it was just, you know, atrocious. It was so bad. Not to mention traffic from Colorado Springs, which is where I live to Denver can sometimes suck. The, there are two freeways to get there. One is kind of a toll road and it's kind of a little slower to get there. And the other one is a little faster, but you take the risk of sometimes having um, kind of like bad traffic. So that can kind of suck. I decided to take the bad traffic one and I got lucky. So I was able to just get through traffic and head straight there. Um, made a couple pit stops to grab soda and stuff. Um, I already had beer. I already had, I had mostly everything there, but I wanted to go to a store because it said that it was going to rain and I wanted to be ready. So I went ahead and grabbed some ponchos for me and my friends. Um, I guess that's a part of like the rave dad that I have in me, I guess, because like, I'm not a rave dad like at the festival, but when it comes to like planning things out, I am 100% the rave dad. I, I will literally have ponchos for everybody. So I always try to look out for all my friends because like I live here, especially if I'm the one hosting, it's kind of just a thing to do. I think um, obviously money can be an issue for some people, but I mean, I, I don't like to put a price on my friends. Um, so I drive over to, um, See, see, this is where it got complicated because my friend flew in at two o'clock in the afternoon. That was his arrival time, but check-in wasn't until three. So I got there around one o'clock and I thought, oh, I can kill some time. So my buddy told me that it was a, he was hosting like a pregame party and I try to maybe weasel my way into the, into the pregame and then maybe have like a shot and then head over and pick him up. Um, so I park and I pay the, I pay for the parking and I get there and I ring the doorbell. And at that instant, my, my friend, Anthony, who was the one that was flying in goes, Hey man, like I just got off the plane. I'm like, dang it. Like now I got to get my car, drive all the way over there. What really sucked is I'm from there, uh, from, from the pregame to the airport traffic was kind of like, meh. it wasn't like too crazy, but it was still like, it was meh. Right. But I, so I picked them up in time. Everything was smooth. It was great. Um, my buddy, for some reason, <laughs> had a hard time understanding um, what part of like baggage claim you're supposed to exit out of. So that took a few minutes to kind of direct him that he was on the wrong floor. Um, but it's a little different. Like people like me, we travel all the time and, you know, we we know how to get to the people that are picking us up. It's super easy. We all know that short-term parking and baggage claim from where you're supposed to be are literally always on the same row. And then usually like the right chairs and stuff like that usually have a, a separate section. Not many people know that. So for those of you tuning in, um, those things are usually separated. Sometimes in smaller airports, they're not. And it's usually just like, like two lanes back. So sometimes they'll be separated by lanes. Um, but that's just something to be like aware of. Usually like the short-term parking and like, baggage claim are usually in the same area. Um, so when I picked them up and on the way back from the airport, I wanted to go to that pregame and that was like the destination we had chosen. Um, but traffic went from meh to just bleh. And by that sense, it was just so bad that I spent about three times the amount of, about three times the amount of time 
to get back than it took to, for me to go get my friend. Um, that was sad, um, but it was okay. So at that point, we're like, you know what? Let's just head straight to the hotel and we'll just forget about the pregame. We just don't have the time. Um, I still want to get ready. I didn't wear my rave clothes. I wasn't rave ready. Why? Because I didn't want to like sweat through it. and didn't want to like wear it all day. Um, I, for those of you that don't know what I wore, um, it's all on my Instagram. So you'll see like, you know, it, it's not your regular like jeans or shorts and, and a tank top. Um, I like to wear really cool stuff, stuff that I see like on Amazon or stuff that I see in like certain rave stores. Um, if anyone's wondering like, what rave stores are available. I do have that on my Instagram and I do have that on, on the description on my YouTube channel. Um, I do have a bunch of stores if you're willing, if you're trying to like look for clothes for, for raves. Okay. So we finally get to the hotel and I keep saying hotel, but I will be honest. I stayed at a motel six. Um, I never stay at motel six because this one time at, I went to Meow Wolf in Santa Fe New Mexico and I legit saw somebody die. Like, like there was a lady on the bed, um, completely dead covered by uh, CSI. They were doing an investigation of why this person was dead on the hotel, sorry, in, in the motel room. And ever since then, I'm just like, dude, like I never want to be at a motel six ever again, but you know, I, I really didn't want to spend the money this time. Um, I originally planned on just driving to and from like the event back to Colorado Springs and just bringing everybody with me. But honestly, that hour to hour and a half drive can suck sometimes. And that takes away from like sleep that I would rather have. So we went and we all went ahead and just pitched in for like Motel 6. It cost like um, 65 bucks per person. It was three of us. Um, and honestly, I looked at other like hotels that were like nearby and they were about two to three times the price and their star rating on Expedia was like 2.8 or something like that. And this motel six had like a 3.5 rating. So I just went with what the rating said. And, and honestly, it wasn't like, it wasn't bad at all. I actually, we used the, we, we used motel six for what we wanted to. And that was literally to sleep. That's, we were so tired that, sleep was literally all we did anyways. And then we like the next morning we did grab some food, but other than that, it's like, what else could we have done? Right. So, um, so yeah, I had other buddies who got more expensive hotels and that is where we pre-gamed for day two. Um, obviously we weren't going to invite everybody to our place because well, their place was just a little bougier, which is nicer for us, I guess. So even even better, right? We didn't have to even pregame at our place. So we 100% use it just to sleep and get ready. Um, I don't regret my decision going with Motel 6. Um, the Denver area isn't as bad as Santa Fe. So um, it, it kind of like relieved me to know that like the area we were in wasn't too crazy. All right, so we're going to jump into the festival and festival stuff. So... Day one, we're going to go grab, uh, we're, we're going to go and park somewhere. Um, it is just me and my friend, Anthony, my friend Hayden, who is also part of our squad. I said there was three of us at the hotel. Um, that is Hayden. He's the third person. He came from New Mexico and he was still driving. So while we were in the festival, he was still driving to get to his way to the, to the festival. Um, but me and Anthony, we ended up going, um, finding some parking. I should have, and I'll tell you this, I should have actually bought like the parking passes that they, that you can buy online. It was like $10. Um, but my dumbass like just wasn't about it. Um, and it's, it's less that I didn't want to do it. It's just that between driving, picking up things and like, I was go, go, go the entire time. So there was no time for like, you know, let me look at myself and whatever when I'm driving. And I, I am not a big fan of texting and driving. Um, my friends can attest to that. I just don't like it. I will usually let my friends text for me and something like that. But like, it was just, I don't know. I, I guess I dropped the ball on getting the parking, uh, the parking for that. And we try to, we try to find parking. Actually the parking lots are like full already by the time we get there, 
we got there a little later um and that's just because day one the hotels don't exactly let you check in early all the time um and then plus getting ready and pre-gaming and stuff by the time we got there it was like five o'clock so i can understand why the parking lots were full but what i didn't understand is why they were full i thought we were like in a stadium but luckily the they were like they were like private parking lots um outside of the the stadium which where we ended up parking i went to one lady and she only a lot she only had cash and i'm like well like you think like in the middle of covid you'd have like like a card reader or something you know like you have venmo but she was an old lady so i don't think i i don't, I don't even know um, but she directed us to another person who was taking cards and Venmo or whatever. So we finally found a place. We parked. Um, my buddy wanted to pay for it. And maybe he should enough. Like, low-key, maybe he should enough. Because this mofo ended up losing his debit card. And I think he lost it probably when he was trying to put his, like, card back in his wallet after he paid. But we walked from that parking lot all the way to the festival grounds. And just to get to the security entrance – took forever it was a long long walk um the way that um and, and you know it's funny okay i should have remembered where the vip parking lot or the part the vip security section was at because they didn't change it from last year and i ended up going with my friend to ga and then i had to go all the way around the festival to the VIP because they're completely opposite um, entrances. So there I go walking all the way around and I finally get there and the lady goes up to me and she goes, no GoPros. And I'm like, no, 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 you, you're kidding, right? She goes, no, no, they're prohibited items. So I go on there and I look at it, 100% prohibited items. I'm like, well, this blows. And the first thing that went through my mind was like, thank God I have the car keys because I don't know how he would have given me the car keys to put this back in my car. I would have like probably had to like hide my GoPro in like a bush or something, which it, this is like a $300 GoPro. I'm just, I'm just not doing that. Um, so what do I do? I'm in a pickle. I have to get back to my car and that walk was insane, but I do it. So I walking and then I see scooters. The Lord has blessed me with scooters. So I spent 15 minutes on this Lyft scooter. I'm like, I could have probably been there by now. And then I thought about it like, maybe not. That was a pretty long walk, but maybe, I don't know. Um, so I, I, I was like, okay, this Lyft thing isn't working. I don't know how, like I have a Lyft account, but there's no scooter section. Maybe I'm not seeing it. I don't know. And there's another one. It's like called Lime something. So I go to that one. I go to the Lime one. Boom, 30 seconds. I'm like connected. I'm like, I could have saved 15 minutes of my time just going straight to this one. But I was stubborn because I was like, oh, like I have a Lyft account. This should work, right? No, no. But there I go. I scooter my way through traffic, through people, pedestrians, through sidewalk, through go-karts and all sorts of people on the road. And I finally get to my parking spot, put my GoPro away. And I make the decision that I am now going to vlog with my cell phone. So... If you've seen my vlogs uh, for Global Dance Festival, those are all with my phone. Um, that sucked. I hate holding my phone in the in a direction where I have to vlog. Um, it'd be probably different with like a maybe like a cell phone vlog stick or something like that. That might be a little different because just I just hate holding things in you know like in, in the sense of like vlogging it without like a stick. It just makes things more difficult, and I don't like it. Um, so I, I put that away and then boom, on my face, I start like feeling water. And I'm like, you're freaking kidding me, dude. We're not, I'm like, it better not rain. The weather was set to literally thunderstorm. It was supposed to thunderstorm for both uh, for both days. And for those of you that went in 2019, you guys will know that like um, rain and thunderstorms in general during global dance do not mix very well so 2019 i went to this two-day festival but i only went day two and i went day two because i had huge uh i well okay one i had work right and i didn't want to go from work to the festival and, and miss like half the festival moron i should have i should that's exactly what i should have done 
And I'll tell you why, because day two comes along and I have my ticket, you know, we get, we pregame, we get into the festival and I'm getting like jealous of all the VIP people. So I upgrade to VIP. Um, there's no receipts because it was all cash. And about 30 minutes later, thunderstorm hits. I remember like it was yesterday. I was at the taco stand. I was getting my tacos and it started storming so bad. Things were flying everywhere. You know, people were going crazy. There was lightning literally striking near us. And um, everything was so windy that we had to get underneath like this like canopy thing, like this metal canopy thing. You know, maybe that, that wasn't a good idea. I don't know how that works. Um, but anyways, they told us to get underneath the, the canopy thing. So we did as we were told. And a uh, poor lady um, that was making my tacos because she was trying to like work hard. And I had just paid for my four tacos. And I honestly was like, well, I guess I'm never getting those tacos again. She went through the thunderstorm. She went through the whole thunderstorm and she gets to me and she goes, I got you your tacos. And I'm like, Mm. Mm. there is a god um four tacos and i was like dude you made my freaking day i i devoured those things and we set out for our journey to get underneath the stadium that's where everybody was headed we were just trying to like find cover it was just it was just so windy and it was just so bad and um we were just kind of honestly we were just kind of just trying to see if it was like gonna be like um if the festival was going to start up again, or if we were going to just end it and all be all according to some people, the reason why it ended is people were apparently like jumping over things and like stealing stuff. And that's what I heard. I don't know. If that's completely true, but that's what I heard. That it was just people looting and stuff. And at that point it just got too crazy uh, to deal with, with the thunderstorm that they just canceled the event. Um, I don't know. I, I feel like it was a pretty severe event. Uh, I feel like, Speakers were, were spinning out. I mean, stages were like, you know, being flown and stuff. I think that it was just too dangerous, honestly. Um, I, I don't know if like the city called it off. I don't know. Um, but speculations, you know, people talking about like people looting, I guess. I don't know. People just making shit up. Um, so, yeah, that's my story for 2019 Global Dance Festival. So when those specks of water started hitting my face as I was like getting back to the festival, man. I mean, I don't, I don't want to claim PTSD. It, I mean, it wasn't that crazy, but definitely traumatic in the point where like, I felt like I came to this festival again and same thing's going to happen. It's going to be canceled again. The worst part, the worst part that I still think about to this day about that festival being canceled is that I, is that the, the one, okay. They did refund us. I'll tell you this. They did refund us for those tickets. I think we either got 75% refund or full refund. I cannot remember, but I never got refunded for upgrading to VIP because I paid with cash and they didn't have like cards or anything. And they weren't refunding you for that. Like, like those upgrades there were like final, like you weren't getting money for that back. So I got screwed with like a hundred dollars. That's how much the upgrade was. It was like around hundred dollars. So that's the one thing I hate, but let's talk about 2021. Let's stop. Rem let's stop reminiscing about, the bad old days, um, maybe they say bad old days or the bad old days because that weather was battle worthy. Um, so let's talk about the map um, for Global Dance Festival 2021. Can I say that I was really upset with the fact that the map didn't come out till the day before and the lineup didn't come out till the day before as well, or was it? Was it one or two days? I think it was like 30 hours before both map and the line and, and like the set times came out. And I I think that's like the first time I've ever like had a festival give us um, both of those things the day before. Usually the set times, you know, and the map come out a little earlier than that. But with our frustration, I mean, that sucked, especially because I had to like I wanted to do a meetup with uh me and Candidiva, for those of you that don't know her, she's a black female content creator in the festival space. Um, she's an amazing person. I did the meetup with her. She co-hosted with me and we had an amazing time. Um, but I struggled with getting like the information out because I'm not going to make a meetup on a time frame that like a, a great DJ is going to start because 
I want to see that DJ. And I'm sure like she did too. And I'm sure everybody that was going to show up did as well. So I'm like, okay, I need, I have to wait for these set times and I have to wait for the map because in case they change the map or whatever, I don't want to like be like, Oh, like where the global dance sign is at because that place is always crowded. There's always lines and it's always like, there's always like a barrier, you know, for people like to like pick, take pictures. Um, there wasn't in 2019, but there was this year. I don't know why they barricaded it this year. I mean, whatever. I don't run. I don't run that event. So, but the map layout, um, it was good. Um, in my opinion, I think it was great. I do love festivals that are like in concrete and gravel, and you know. So it was in the it was in the parking lot of the stadium. So I did I did like that. Um, the stage layout was great i thought it was amazing um there was no sound blade whatsoever i i could hear only the stages um for whatever stage it was at so i did like that there was a little bit I, uh, you know okay so the stages right they were like tent canopy things um each of those stages were except for main stage so you, that's kind of what helped like eliminate some of the sound blade but the moment you like left that area you could hear like um, so like the experimental base, um, like stage, um, if you like left the, that entrance, you could see, you could hear the dubstep cause the dubstep was louder. So, and, and it was going to the direction of like, I call it the work stage because technically it was like a work stage. I promise you. Um, but I did love how they laid it all out though. Like ultimately it was a pretty nice layout. Um, they had a house stage behind the main stage, which I enjoyed, but I think the house stage was too small i don't know in my opinion it was so crowded it was like uh i was there to see john summit and like i you know i was all the way in the back it was just so crowded uh so i think maybe they could have made that just slightly bigger uh maybe mo maybe move it around a little bit to like give it more room i don't know and i think at times um the main stage which is weird got pretty packed too um but maybe that just maybe that just comes with the fact that like the state the the festival is getting just bigger and bigger every year. So, but it's weird, right? Like if you guys have been keeping up with like global dance, they weren't even at stage four. Sorry, stage three, or was it sorry phase three? They weren't even at phase three for like the ticket selling. They weren't. So how did they? How was it so packed? So I'm wondering how many like phase three tickets there were. There probably weren't any. Who knows? Um. The lineup, though, for Global Dance was amazing. Um, I definitely love that they added, um, like, some pretty big stuff on there. Uh, for those of you that don't know, Elenium played back-to-back -back, uh, with Dabin and back-to-back -back with Set the Sky. Such an amazing set. Um, but they also had Excision. Um, I mean, they had Griffin. They had some really big names. So the lineup was amazing and they catered to almost like everyone too. Cause I mean, you're talking about like experimental bass, dubstep, rhythm, house, you know, it was all, it was all there. So if you liked any of those, like, unless you're my friend, because my friend Hayden literally was at the work stage the entire time. He never left. That was like home for him for the next two days. Um, yeah. So I love that they cater to all genres. That was really nice. Um, the production was, it was good. I mean, obviously the main stage had mostly everything um, and the other stage kind of lacked some stuff, obviously. I the I want to say like the dubstep stage, or I would call it, let's call it the second stage. So that second, second main stage, um, it lacked like, it probably needed more production, honestly, more like lasers, more, more a bunch of things, obviously. Um, but that's only because you're I'm comparing it to like the main stage, which I guess you shouldn't. But I, I feel like the headliners that played at that stage were pretty big. And I think they deserved like almost equal production. But I don't know. I was drunk. What do I know? Um, so when we were talking about like me upgrading to VIP, I guess you would ask yourself, is VIP worth it? For me, the answer is yes. I obviously upgraded in 2019 to VIP. And this year I bought a VIP pass for both days. The reason being, and, and I normally go to GA, I, I promise you, I'm normally GA all the time. 
but VIP this time because they separate the VIP section um, in the main stage and he, the VIP are the people who actually get the rail. So you have this in, you have this huge front spot in front of the stage. And that's one thing I think like, if you're gonna be VIP, they should be worth it. And that in Global Dance, they 100% make worth it. VIP is so much better than GA at Global Dance. Um, but by the end of the night, like, it was so crowded, so packed. It almost didn't make any sense at that point. And you almost want to BGA by like the end of the night. So that really depends if you want to be crowded in VIP. It could be worth it, especially if you have a lot of friends. Um, me personally, I will probably keep doing VIP if I keep going back to global. But that's just my preference. I think it's worth it. But getting drinks, uh, getting food and that kind of stuff um there is a like a village for vip and i don't remember it being so crowded um i don't know maybe they just need to add more bars but i figure that since i was vip the bars in vip would be like there'd be like less lines and there was just as much it, the lines were just as long in vip as ga so that mind boggled me a little bit because I didn't know where to get my my alcohol from now. I, like You'd have to spend like 20 minutes getting alcohol. I kid you not. Um, the food lines weren't too bad. It always depended on what you were going to get. Um, I got tacos and I got these, this thing called like a taco nacho. Uh, both times the lines, there were like two people in front of me. It wasn't a big deal. But people were telling me that like other places were like seven to 10 people deep. So I guess it depended on what you were getting. Um, but alcohol wise sucked uh they need to add more you know alcohol lines because that was ridiculous i i as somebody who paid double the amount of money for vip shouldn't have to wait the same amount you know as a, as if i had paid ga i mean that's kind of like what the benefits are of paying more money right like if, so that's just my two cents um mostly because i love to drink so um well, let's see let's talk about the prices for these things. Now the food prices, I mean, for festival food prices, they were kind of, this, eh, they were kind of pretty regular. Um, they were like 10 to like $14 per like plate of whatever you were going to get the alcohol though. I think the beers were seven or $9, depending on what you got. And then like the 9% beers, like seltzer things, um the well not seltzers they're like cocktail things they're called monaco uh cocktails those were like 14 dollars, and they were like the size of a red bull can so i don't know i mean i definitely got it once but i finished it so fast that i kind of just regretted it and i kind of just like to like have a drink in my hand honestly so i kept just buying beer after that so probably not worth buying all that alcohol and it's just better to like just pre a little harder and just have to party a little harder. I don't know. Um, I guess pricey, I would say pricey. Um, so let's talk about my meetups. Did I go to any, did I have any? So obviously I had one. Um, I had a day two. I decided on day two because of the weather and I was trying to like make it, make it so like, um, it wasn't going to rain on us. And then uh, Candy Diva had some stuff that she needed to do on day one. She didn't, she wanted to have full attention on the meetup. So we decided that day two was just the best. Um, did I go to any meetups? Yes. I went to the Lunchbox meetup day one, um, bumped into Ray Tina and um, Ace Antonio, <laughs> uh, ran into some friends. They was it was fun seeing them and stuff like that. Um, I mean, that's what meetups are all about. If I could improve something about my own meetup, though, um, it would be to have more totems. I need to have more totems, honestly, because they allowed flags, but no poles. So I couldn't like we you couldn't put you couldn't put a flag on a pole, but you could carry your flag. I'm like, well, that doesn't make it. Like I'm trying to like you know, make it so everybody can find me. 
Um, so I think in the future, I'm going to start like stocking up on like totems to have just in case uh, there are festivals that no longer want you to have like a pole with your flag, which I don't know why. Um, I can, oh, okay. Well, like, I guess now I can think of why it's like, they don't want you ruining the production with your flags waving in front of people, I guess. Maybe, I don't know. That's what I could think of. Um, yeah, but I mean, I wish they allowed flagpoles. I wish they allowed GoPros. Um, so let's get into some stuff about DJs. Um, did I meet any DJs while I was there? So, yes. I bumped into... Uh, so for those of you that um, just heard at the beginning, x was a homie. Um, I obviously 100% supported him during his set and I hung out with him. So I'm going to put him on there as one of the DJs. Um, hung out with my boy, Luke. He also played. I got, um, those are like top tier DJs or anything like that, but like, you know, those are the homies. So I bumped it to right 10 and his girlfriend. Um, last time I bumped into them was at Uppy Dubby. And I actually bumped into right 10 at the bar. And then I bumped into his girlfriend just randomly. I was like, I was getting tacos backstage and she was there and we just started talking. And then I traded her candy, put her in my vlog and stuff. And then she goes, Oh, by the way, like ride tens, like my boyfriend is. I'm like, what? She's super sweet, by the way. She's awesome. She's actually the one that took our picture um, at global. Um, I bumped into John summit. Oh my gosh. He's so sweet. He's the kind of guy that I would love to like go to a party with. He's so cool. Um, Bumped into Getter. Uh, it's funny because I've like I've seen Getter up close. I've but I've never had like the balls to just go up to him and be like, "Can I take a picture?" I try not to fanboy sometimes, but it's it can get a little hard because I am who I am. And this time I was like, "Getter, can I just can I just like, snap a pic, bro?" Um, Getter, by the way, looks good lately. He's lost some weight. He's uh, yeah, he he looked amazing. He was amazing. He was funny, and then. Always great to see Brondo. He's a local homie. Um, great dude. See him here in Colorado all the time. Um, it, it's great. Always great seeing him. Um, and then I bumped into Lucid. For those of you that were at the Wook stage, I'm sure you heard him, of him. And then um, uh, Antone. I don't really know how to pronounce that. I think it's Antone. I think that's what he puts on his um, Instagram. So I bumped into him as well. Um, but backtracking to Lucid, Lucid, I actually bumped into him at Ubby Dubby. We talked for like a good hour or so. And I honestly like want to say that we got close and stuff during that time. And we talk all the time and it was just great seeing him take pictures, got to meet his girlfriend and stuff. That was super cool. Met some of his friends. We just talked and stuff. So it's like, it's really great. Just like seeing like your uh, DJ friends and stuff, um, especially with like, like starting off just seeing them once and then keep seeing them again. And eventually you guys grow like a bond in a relationship. So super cool. I think those are all the DJs I met. Um, DJs that I was like on stage for. Um, I didn't really go on stage much. I was on stage for Midnight Tea. Amazing. Uh, just love his music, but it was during the day. Um, at night, I stayed for Griffin, so I missed ex – was it Excision that played during that time? Yeah. So I missed Excision, and I saw Griffin instead. And honestly, I don't regret it. He was so badass. I love Griffin. I've seen Excision like four times this month. So seeing Griffin, especially like that close, amazing. I, I, I definitely fanboyed while I was up on stage. Um so let's go, let's jump into what is available at the festival. Aside from the food, the drinks, and the stages, they did have like an art installation in the in the center. They had a silent disco, which was underneath the stadium. Um, for those of you that don't know what silent disco is, you basically have a headset and there are three channels and three different types of genres. And those artists each play their own they're usually different genres and they, they all play like different style basically um, per channel. Um, for next time, if you want drinks, go to the silent disco stage. There is a bar I had no idea about until day two and there's no line. There's zero line. So if you ever want drinks, just go there. It's great. And um, yeah, silent disco was a blast. I went twice actually. 
um we got the art installation like i said um super cool stuff great great place to like take a bunch of pictures um i actually like i think i i, I was talking to somebody on instagram it was a radiate that they actually are the ones that construct all that art stuff super cool um then you have your carnival rides um so i did go on one ride and i met a couple friends and i didn't i didn't meet friends but i made friends while i was in line because you know who I am as a person. I'm just so talkative and social and stuff. And we added some people. They they were super sweet. Um, and we witnessed this dude going crazy on the ride. I think they tried to kick him out of the festival, and the cops were like, "Oh, we'll give you like another chance. Just you know, stop being crazy." So um, they were they were I think like four rides, four four or five rides. They were like there was like a bungee jumping thing and a bunch of cool stuff. Um, so let's see what else we have. Um, let's talk about some memorable moments. Now we got, I think, most of the cover, memorable moments. Um, I will always remember Candy Diva and our friend Mai giving me liquor. They snuck plastic bottles. I don't know how they snuck them in. I'm sure females have, like, you know, places to store stuff like that but they they, they had it at these plastic bottles so it doesn't go in the metal detector and they just filled it with like different types of bottles and yeah that, that got pretty litty not gonna lie that was that was pretty sweet of them to uh to sneak that in because I, I was not about to wait in line i was not about to pay like 15 dollars for another drink so that was great another memorable moment will be lucid um when i when i was talking to him i told him that my friend hayden um is a huge fan. Lo he loves Lucid more than I do. I promise you. He's he's all about the Wook style music. Loves experimental stuff. Looks he just loves the the wonky shit. He's all about it. Melodic, you name it. He is a huge fan of certain types of genres. So I'm like Lucid, you would do me like the biggest favor if my friend could take a picture with you. He's not here, but I'll call him over, and you know just. Seeing my friend fanboy hard was so awesome. So that's a memorable moment. Lucid, you're awesome. I love you. You know that already, though. Um, another memorable moment is the carnival ride guy that I was talking about. This guy was literally like humping the ride or something. He was like standing up, unbuckled and everything. It was super dangerous. The machine was going super fast. And all I remember right now is like, this guy having the time of his life just riding this ride. And then the guy who was like in charge of the ride was like trying to get him off. And he just had like no luck. He had like literally shut down the machine. Um, I'm going to remember that because like it just takes balls or just a lot of alcohol, really. Um, and then my last memorable moment will probably be like being on stage with Griffin. Um, it was such beautiful music and being on stage to witness it made it even that much better um i will i will say thanks to bobby that's uh ex corbett's dad for getting me up there and stuff um um bobby right now is going through some stuff uh just know if you were listening to this uh i have you in my prayers um i hope everything is well brother um and thank you for everything you've done for me thank you for always being great to me ex cobra you have an amazing dad cherish him always all right, let's go to the pros and the cons. So three pros that I'll say is the staff was really nice. Upon entrance to this festival, the staff was like energetic, super nice to me. I don't have anything bad to say about the staff whatsoever. Uh, the bathroom lines were so fast. I had no trouble getting in and out of the restrooms. That was a huge plus. I hate having, I hate when there's like a lack of restrooms because you I will either go in that porta potty or on your floor. You choose. So that was great. And then three would be the closing acts. I mean, the last like, you know, two to three closing acts of the day were just back to back to back amazingness. And like, they, I, I think they did a good job on like who they brought in. Uh, three cons. I do think the venue is small. And I think they need to either, they, they need to just expand it a little bit. Um, I know that might affect the, the parking lot situation, maybe. I don't know. Or maybe just relocate. But I think that the festival is going to start getting bigger and bigger, and they're going to have to think about that in the future. The rules 
are just a little too strict for me. Um, the fact that you wouldn't allow my GoPro inside, that uh, the fact that you won't allow flagpoles inside is just the rules are too much. Um, I don't like it. I would say that's a con. Um, be a little more flexible. Understand that you have different types of audience. Like I'm gonna record regardless of wherever, and like we're gonna bring flags regardless, you know. But like it would make the festival experience just that much better, right? And then I do think that the festival ended a little early. Um, I know a lot of people are just used to like festivals ending like around two o'clock or so. I know probably in the city of Denver, you probably can't have that because it's outside and stuff, you know, but it's still something that people were complaining about. Um, so let's see. Were there any after parties? So let's skip after this event. Um, so after parties for this event, there were about four a night and then four before. So they had like pre parties and after parties. And they, they, they were, it, okay, so like, I don't know how people got to these after parties in time, because by the time the event ended, by the time you got out of the parking lot, by the time you drove and parked and got in line to the, to the after party, there was like an hour left. So I don't know, like, why they wouldn't like maybe extend the after parties and just like not sell alcohol to a certain point. They could have done that. Um, but there were after parties, uh, you know, amazing DJs were playing during those after parties. Um, did I go to any of them though? Not really. I prioritized sleeping and I wasn't about to spend like, I wasn't about to spend what, like $50 for an after party that I was only going to show up to for an hour. Nah, fam. So I, I called it a night each night. And honestly, I regret nothing. Um, I had to take my friend back to the airport that on, on day after day two, and I was well rested and came back to the to Motel Six and just slept again. My friend Hayden had to drive back to New Mexico, so honestly, we took the adult approach on this one. And even though we wanted to keep partying, obviously because all our friends are partying, whatever, it just was the smarter choice. And the adult in us were like, we need sleep. And that's probably how you know we're just getting older and wiser and whatever. And it's like we would rather sleep and be rested for the next day, um, which is what we did. Would I, like overall, you know, would I go again? Would I go to Global Dance Festival again, experiencing everything that I experienced? Um, I would say yes. Um, but it would depend on which of my friends are going only because I am moving to Florida and this would have to be like a flight thing. Um, I mean, Global Dance has shown that the lineup is pretty good. So yeah, I guess I would go again. Um, I definitely enjoyed it. I definitely had a great time. Um, so yes. Now, before I end this podcast, I want you guys to know that I love every single one of you who is watching and witnessing episode one of Festi Hub Podcast. And I really, really appreciate it. Um, it means a lot. So I want to end with a note. Um, I saw this on Radiate and it was kind of, and I saw this on Instagram too. And I just want everybody to be careful for future events and stuff. I know there's a lot of you guys here that are watching this that enjoy to partake with on like party favors and maybe like you see ground score, it's so bad to say, but you see ground score and take it. Um, be very careful. Apparently there has been fentanyl like in the Denver, Colorado area lately. Um, apparently some people have died already. I guess it was already found, you know, being passed around in global dance festivals. So just be mindful for all, for all of you guys going to like future events. Those of you guys who are in the Colorado area, that are partaking in, in party favors or happen to stumble upon ground score and stuff like that. Um, think twice before you take stuff like that. It could be your last time. So I just want to put that out there. Just be careful guys. And this ends episode one of Festi Hub podcast, global dance festival after review. I am your host, Manny, AKA Frisky Hug. Have a great time, everyone. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Bye.